Hello everyone, this is Mad Dog. Today we're gonna be exploring the new fog feature of DCS, and we'll do it while flying an ILS with the F-16. To create the weather effects we're gonna see in this uh, tutorial, we need to come into the mission editor, select the uh, weather tab, and for the weather in general, I selected overcast and rain one with a, a base of 3,300 feet. And for the fog, we need to come down here. My current settings are on manual. I selected a visibility of 3,000 feet and a thickness of 2,000 feet. And it's uh, set to begin at the mission start. You can also add fog key. And that would allow you to select a start time and an end time to your uh, fog, either to create fog that is uh, in uh, formation or either uh, fog that is dissipating. You can also select manual mode or uh, sorry, auto mode or off mode, but I haven't tried them yet. We'll stick to manual for this time. Before we start an approach, we need to study the approach plate a little bit. So this is the approach plate for the ILS Zulu runway 07 in Bodo, Norway. Top here, we have the frequencies that would be used in real life to get the ATIS, the weather, the approach controller frequencies, tower and ground, but we're not gonna bother with that today. We're going to jump right into with the uh, localizer frequency, which is 110.3. The final approach course for the approach, which is 072 degrees. And we need to come down at the bottom of the chart for the decision altitude. The decision altitudes, there are four of them for categories A, B, C, and D. These are for different approach speed for different categories of aircraft. The slower the aircraft, they are going to use A, B, C, and then D for the faster aircraft. Fighter jets like the F-16 are have really fast approach speeds, so we're going to use category D. So our decision altitude, which is is going to be 306 feet. We're also going to use the minimum sector altitude, which is the safe altitude you can go uh, down to within a radius of 25 nautical miles around the, uh, in this case, the uh, Bodo VOR, but we're going to use the TACAN today. Coming in from the northeast, which is the setup we have today, we're going to be good to go down to 5,000 feet. Like I just mentioned, the uh, TACAN is not on the approach chart. Its frequency is 45 X-ray. It is co-located to the VOR, so we can still use the chart as a reference. Coming in from the northeast, we're going to be uh, descending to 5,000 feet. And then just prior to the TACAN, we're going to do a, a turn to a heading of 233 degrees. And then we're going to track and maintain the 233 degree radial of the TACAN outbound to 8.6 DME. As we are outbound, we're going, we're going also to descend to 2,000 feet. When we get to 8.6, we're going to drop the gear and then initiate a right turn to fly and intercept the localizer and glide slope for the ILS for runway 07. The F-16 is equipped with a fancy little uh, thing, which is called the uh, command steering. It is a uh, steering donut, which is going to appear in the uh, heads-up display. And all we need to do is put our flight path vector on top of it and then follow it. And it's going to help us to guide the aircraft along the localizer and glide slope. Let's jump right in and take a look. All right, let's get the airplane ready for our ILS into Bodo. First, we're going to come up to the ICP with TILS. And we're going to select our TACAN frequency, which is 45 X-ray. So 45 enter. Make sure it's in the right band. X-ray. And we have the right identifier, which is uh, BOO. Uh, please note we are in uh, TAC and receive. We're going to hit sequence to get ta transmit receive. This way we're going to get the distance on our HSI. Uh, right side now we're going to double down and come down to highlight the uh, frequency. The ALS frequency is 110.3. Enter. And the course is 72 degrees. Now you can hear a lot of uh, static and noise and this uh, Morse code audio. Uh, we can lower the volume for both of them with TACAN and ILS volume knobs here down here. Here we go. That's better. Now let's come down to our uh, HSI. On the HSI, we're going to select PLS TACAN. This mode, PLS TACAN, Precision Landing System and TACAN. So both are displayed. We have the needle, this needle, which is pointing to uh, the uh, TACAN, the Bodo TACAN, and this 
course line is the ILS course line which is set on 072 degrees we're 53 miles away we're gonna turn around and fly directly to the uh, Boto Takan all right we are currently on our way to uh, the Boto Takan we are 41 nautical miles away at 16,000 feet and we uh, know that we're coming in from the Northeast and we're gonna be or flying the uh, Boto Takan and then intercept the 233 radial outbound to 8.6 descend at 2,000 feet turn back inbound and intercept the uh, localizer and glide slope to the runway now we are we are gonna be planning our descent uh, we are safe to come down to 5,000 feet within 25 miles of the uh, Takan of Bodo and we're currently flying at 16,000 feet so 16 to 5,000 feet that's 11,000 feet we need to lose and I want to do it on a 5 degree angle so we're gonna start our descent roughly uh, 20 miles from the uh, Takan station. I have a video on that, a tutorial on uh, how to do VNAV. I'll link it in the uh, video description below. Something else we're going to do is we are going to anticipate our turn outbound. So we're not going to be flying directly over the Takan and then intercept the 233. We're going to anticipate our turn so we don't have to intercept the radial from the south. We're going to turn and be r pretty much right on it. And we're going to do this at a distance of about a uh, mile, a mile and a half from the uh, Takan. Twenty-six miles. We're going to be starting very shortly. Our descent. Speed-wise, we're going to be about two hundred and fifty on the outbound leg, and then uh, we're going to try to uh, respect that two hundred knots maximum at Ripto as we intercept the uh, Loken Glide Slope inbound. We are starting our descent. Five degrees nose down. Just above and to the left of the uh, flight path vector, you see uh, two dash lines. The vertical one is the localizer deviation bar, and the horizontal one is the glide slope deviation bar. They are currently dashed, and when the uh, sa the uh, signal becomes valid, they're going to become solid. 12 miles away from the uh, TACAN through 10,000 feet, check our altimeter setting, 2992 inches. We've got 5,000 feet to go. We're going to be entering the clouds very soon. Things are going to get serious. And if, to, if you were to lose the uh, heads-up display for some reason, you still have those same uh, deviation lines that would guide you to uh, on the ILS on the uh, ADI. There's 6,000 feet for 5,000 feet. Still tracking to the... Uh, Boto Takan, four miles away. Start to level off. There's 5,000 feet. Stop here. Power still at idle. Let the airspeed come back. Two miles away. We're going to start our turn very shortly. And we're going to turn straight to a heading of 233. One mile away, here we go, right turn. Two, three, three, roll out. Now let's take a look. Our needle just flipped. So the uh, Takan is uh, behind us. And we see the tail of the needle, which is pretty much on... Uh, it's right now at 239, and it's still sliding to the left. It's going to go all the way to 233 Altitude. degrees. Altitude. We can now start a descent, another 5 degree angle descent. And this time we're good down to 2,000 feet. 3 miles away, or 3, uh, yeah, 3 DME from the uh, Takan, out of 4,000 feet. Airspeed's coming back. You see that the localizer deviation bar is now solid. And the uh, we're going to be able to follow the command steering guidance in a minute. The, guide, the command steering guidance is... A uh, little dot that we're going to be following with our flight path vector, which is going to guide us on the uh, path uh, laterally and vertically all the way down to the runway.
6.3 miles, 6.4 miles, two more miles to go before we start our turn. Seven miles. We're going to be leveling off here at 2,000 feet. Airspeed's coming back. You see the dot I was talking about on the horizon. Lower the gear. Make sure the gear comes down. One. Two, three greens. Excellent. What's our distance now? 8.8. 8. 8. It's time to turn inbound. And I'm following. I'm going to be turning inbound now to about a heading of 035. Making sure to maintain my 2,000 feet. I haven't extended the speed brakes yet. We're going to use the speed brakes to help us catch the uh, glide slope. This way we don't have to play with the uh, throttle of the aircraft. Coming around now through a uh, north heading. You could just follow the uh, command steering all the way from here, and that would guide you on a 45 degree intercept. I've elected to do a, a shallower intercept. The uh, glide slope deviation bar is now solid, so both signals for the tracking laterally and vertically are now valid. We are doing 200 knots as per the approach plate. And we are just waiting for the command steering to start moving, and then we're going to be following it. Here we go. Slight right bank. And you're going to see the uh, vertical deviation bar start to slide to the right. It's going to center. And once we are on the ILS perfectly, it's going to form a cross in the heads up display. Intercepting the glide slope. The speed brakes comes out. I don't have to touch the power too much. And we are six miles out, six and a half miles out. And we're gonna do some, do some vertical cross-checking for our uh, altitude. So on a three degree glide slope, when you're five miles out, you should be about 1500 feet off the ground. So we're coming up on five miles now. Airspeed comes back to uh, on speed. Five miles out, 1,500 feet. And all you need to do is small corrections to fly the uh, command steering donut right in the center of the flight path vector. Watch the airspeed, a little too slow, a little more power. Coming up on three miles out, we should be at about 900 feet. We're on track. Our minimum descent altitude or decision altitude is 306 feet. So about 600 feet to go. high start to see the ground slowly and now you got to uh, resist the urge to uh, fly visually until you have sufficient visual cues to transition to a visual approach right about here is good we have the air the uh, runway in sight I'm going to transition to a visual approach
with the normal flare to landing. Welcome to Bodo. I flew hundreds of uh, ILS approaches in real life through fog, snow, rain, and I must say that the visual effects that uh, Eagle Dynamics has implemented in DCS are very nice. It's uh, very close to reality. I like it a lot. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, go ahead and practice your IFR, ILS approaches or attack and approaches, whatever it might be. And uh, let me know how it goes. Thank you very much. See you next time.